In this presentation we're going to look at SPSS and k-means clustering and what we are using is SPSS version 19 and the data set we're using is iris-cluster iris-cluster so we in this uh, uh, type of clustering analysis we get to choose how many clusters we're going to use so in this case we're going to use three clusters so let's get our data set up here and there we have it there we have the cases and we have four numeric variables. We also have a species variable which we are not going to use in this particular case but we're going to use the other ones. So first off we're going to go to analyze then we're going to go to classify and I'm going to go here to k-means. Now just take a moment there to have a look at that. Click on k-means. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to deselect all of these actually just for s to s see how it's done. So I'm going to select these four variables as the the way we define our clusters. So these variables are uh, how uh, the, the measurements of the, the measurements of the, from these variables are how our clusters get defined. But the similarity is based on these four variables. So I'm going to select those. We're also going to label our cases. So we're going to label our cases by case. That's the this variable over here. It's just which case is which. We have 150 cases. Now I'm going to deliberately pick three clusters. I'm going to leave that as it is. And I'm going to go over here to iterate, 10 iterations, that's alright. Save. I'm going to save the cluster membership and distance from cluster center. That will appear in the data set afterwards. Options, initial cluster centers and cluster. I'm not really going to look at that, but you will see or sort of see it in the output. So, there's our initial cluster centers. They get randomly generated by SPSS, or well, there's a little algorithm to pick those actually. These are the average values for the three initial clusters that get picked out. So what happens here is that the clusters, the, the average values get updated every so often, or every phase. Anyway, here is cluster membership. So the first, hun uh, the first set of uh, values are get assigned to cluster two. The fifty-fourth case, fifty-first case gets assigned to cluster 3 and the 53rd case guests assigned to cluster 1 so it's all of that cluster information there this is the final cluster centers and the distance from final cluster centers we're not really that inter interested in that so much what well, we are interested in how many uh, items got uh, assigned to each cluster so we see that there are 38 in the first cluster 50 in the second cluster and 62 in the third cluster now I'm just going to go here to the uh, data set here again. I'm just going to click down. So we have again these two variables just got generated as a result of the analysis. This is the predicted cluster for the first case. Is the observation is two. This is the distance from the center for that um, for that cluster as well. So we have 50 of those. We have a versicolor here, uh, uh, case 51, it is category 3, but we also have this one down here, it is category 1, cluster 1 even. So cl cluster 2, cluster 3, cluster 1, and right down the bottom mostly 1s. There are 150 cases, but there's quite a few 3s, uh, cluster trees in there as well. Okay, that ends our presentation. It is possible to do a cross tabulation on the uh, predicted uh, cluster and the uh, actual species. It's a very useful analysis, but I won't make it part of this presentation. Uh, that ends our presentation, actually.